Today we're going to talk about how to install fans on the MKS Monster 8 version 1.0. Now if you don't already understand, the MKS Monster 0 now has the ability to run six fans natively. Now only three of those in this case will be run via signal pins. The other ones are direct power. So as you can see over here, I've marked these jumpers. They're actually red now. They're originally black, but I figured it'd be easier to see. And there's two sets of pins next to each one of these that allow you to adjust the power. So I have it currently on the first set of pins for 24 volts that match my power supply that would be over here. Now these in this particular column right here will not be adjustable for sync for the actual signal pins, pardon me. <clears throat> Whereas on this side they will, and I'll show you the difference now. So if we were to go over to the MKS website for GitHub, you would see that there's a monster eight and then you can actually navigate to the hardware and in this case I'm going to the pins file to actually open it up and see what the settings are for the actual pin. So in this case PA2, PA1, and PA0 are your fans and it is fan 0, 1, and 2. On the other side obviously they're going to be direct power pins. So I'm going to show you how to set this up with three different power sources. So if we go back over to the workbench, I'm going to pop out the actual jumper for the second one and move it to the middle set of pins. And then the last one up here is going to be, actually I'm doing this backwards, it's actually this one, because this is the second fan, being fan two. So it's gonna be 24, 12, and then it's going to be five volts. So I'm going to use these fans being a 24, a 12, and a five. Now I have them spread out so that I can access these so you can see what's going on. So one of the first things that we need to do is plug each one of these in. So I'm gonna plug in the 12 right over here. And then I'm going to plug in the 5 as soon as I found the cord, which is right here. And then finally I'm going to move this one so you can actually see the fan blades on it. So give me a second to flip this over and make sure that it doesn't slide around. So this one actually has fan blades right here. So I'm going to plug this one in the top. So these should be numerically fan 0 fan one and fan two. And that'll be more important in just a moment. So I'm gonna pop out the drive over here and I'm going to prep the power. Now here's the actual power. So for the board power, it's marked down here. Now I've marked the actual power pin, or excuse me, the terminal with a red screw so that I don't accidentally plug in the wrong polarity in the wrong place. So the ground will go over here. Let's see if I can slide this in. They have very tight connections. So I might have to loosen this a little. There we go. So that's tightened down real nice. We'll put the product protective hood back down. And I'm going to put the SD card in the actual SD drive so that we can connect to it and place this in the computer and you may hear a beep in a moment. Now I'm gonna go back over to my desktop and on my desktop I'm gonna go to VS Code. Now I'm gonna click on File and I'm gonna open folder then I'm gonna go to my Downloads folder, my Marlin folder, and then my next Marlin folder. Then I'm gonna select the folder and when this loads, what we'll see currently is the default environment for the Mega 2560, which is not ours. 
So we're going to have to adjust a bunch of things here. So I'm going to do this a little quick. So I'm going to go to the Marlin folder, the source folder, core folder, and then boards.h. Inside here, I'm going to search on monster and find monster eight. So I'm going to highlight this and copy it. The other thing that we have to take note of is the actual chipset. So you can see right here, it says STM32F407. That's going to be important in a moment. So I'm going to minimize this and the source, and I'm going to go to configuration.h, and I'm going to search on motherboard. Next, I'm going to highlight the ramps configuration, paste over it what we just copied, and change the serial port to negative one. Now that that's set, we're not going to set anything in advanced configuration because there are special things that I'll show you in future videos on how to do automated fans with select pins. But for now, I just want to show you the basic setup. So now to set this up to build, we actually need to find which INI default environment we're going to be working in. So to do that, you go to the INI folder. Then you search for your chipset, which in this case is STM32F4. And then you're going to search on Monster. And as you can see, we have the Monster 8 right here. So I'm going to copy that. Now they have other ones. I don't suggest using these unless they change the actual chipset that they're working with. But the MCU at the moment has not changed. So we're going to stick with this. So I'm going to close out of here. I'm going to go to platformio.ini and I'm going to paste this in for the environment. Next, I'm going to click clean. And the reason that I'm doing that is when you first download this, the Mega 2560 is in there. So we're going to clean that out. Then we're going to do the build button, which is the checkbox right here. Now keep in mind, if you get a failure on the first build, Check the checkbox a second time because sometimes things build out of order. If you see it after the second time, find the first red message that you see in here and correct it because the other errors thereafter may be a cascade of errors. So as soon as this completes, what we'll do is we'll actually go to our .pio folder, the MKS in here, and then we'll go and find our firmware.bin, which will appear in a second. So let's scan through here. Apparently I don't see it right away. So let me try closing the folder and reopening it. There it is. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say reveal in File Explorer. Inside File Explorer. So before I actually load the firmware, I wanna show you something. As you can see right here, we have the MKS monster 8bin that I just said. But over in here, we have the MKS monster 8.cur. That's going to be important in a second, and I'll show you why. If you right click on this and you send it to that drive, I'll show you the contrast between them. This one is the one that we're loading, so it may take about 30 seconds to actually load. And this is the one that loaded previously. So it's been converted into all capital letters cur. If you ever want to reload this, let's say on a different system with the same hardware, you'd rename it back to this. And then after it loads, it would be renamed to this. So let's go over to the desktop and plug this in and see what happens. So over here, I'm going to pop out the drive and I'm gonna pop it in here. Now I have the power, like I may have said before, on USB power. So this may take upwards of 30 seconds to load, so we have to wait for the ding. That will be the actual bell you hear on your computer when it recognizes the actual USB connection. So this is probably gonna go on for a bit, so I'll just keep talking, talking until we hear the ding which we just heard. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna move the power jumper over to direct power, which you can do the same way without doing this step, but I wanna show you that so you understand it. I'm gonna plug this back in, which will not power the board now. 
and then I'll plug in the direct power to the board which will bring it up. So once this comes up, we're going to keep an eye on each one of these. So let me weigh these down so that they're not in the way. And we're going to watch the fans when we go over to Pronterface. Inside Pronterface, what you'll see currently is that it's set to COM port 1. Now on occasion, it will see the COM port, but I'm not sure this is the correct one. So I'm going to show you how to make sure it is. So I'll go back over to the desktop for a second and I'll type in device manager. Once that comes up, I'll go over to my COM ports and you can see that it's COM port eight. So I'll close that. I'll go over to here. I'll highlight this, hit backspace and eight, and then I'll connect to the board. So now it says printer is now online. So what we can do now is we can actually test this. And we're gonna use a G code, which I didn't show you yet, but it's called M106. It sets the fan speed. And there's a nomenclature that's outlined down below. Mine will look similar, but I've done this before, so you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about in a second. But P is the index fan. Then we also have the fan off for M107. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type M106, then I'm going to say P0, and then I'm going to say the fan speed of S200, and that's speed at 200. And then I'll press enter and see what happens. And as you can see, the fan comes on. So if you want to set the next fan on, being the next one down, you'll do P1 and then press enter and you notice that fan is now running now if you want to do the final or third one you're going to have to do p2 and then press enter so now all the fans are running so to turn these off you would do m107 p2 and press enter then to change or turn off the other ones, you'll do P1. And then finally, the 24 volt one will be P0. So at this moment, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me out. Um, most of these videos are posted in advance on Patreon for you guys to, to actually uh, peruse before they're actually posted to YouTube. So please take care, be safe, remember to get vaccinated, and wear a mask until this is over. So thank you very much, and take care.